Hi everyone, it's Helen from Slim and Stylish and I have a cute little project for you today. This is a tiny little box. It's oh, four inches by two inches and inside it contains my favourite, licorice comforts. I love licorice comforts. Um, but any sorts of sweets you can just pop in. I was going to make these for my godchildren and put sweets in but I bought a whole packet of licorice comforts and after I'd, I'd finished putting, probably, I ate all the rest. So um, they're not going to be getting them, but this is my cute little project and this is made using the envelope punch board. Um, if you've never used one, you need one in your life. It's so simple to use and so easy. And um, it just makes it straight away for you. So this is using the naturally eclectic designer series paper a bit of a change today I haven't gone with the in colors I've actually gone with pool party so let's get started I don't know whether I mentioned this is actually my fifth day of my seven day back-to-back -back projects so I have two more left to do I'll be been bringing them to you all week and then after then I'm gonna go down to two a week but this was just I'd had lots of new stuff and I wanted to use it. So you need a six by six inch piece of paper or DSP. I'm using this one from the same set, Naturally naturally Eclectic. That's the other side. It's more of an ombre effect on the other side, but I'm going to be using it with this one. You need to cut and score. If you've never used one of these before, I'll explain it to you. These are your inches and your centimetres down the bottom, obviously. You want to go to three and one eighths, which is just there and as soon as you've lined it up I don't know am I far enough away for you to or nearest enough to you to see how to so I want three and three and one eighths was it I said yeah three and one eighths so as soon as you're there you then punch and just here where the nose of your score your punch is you use your scoring tool to score along Okay, it's on that score there. This isn't actually, now I'm doing it, the best paper. The other paper was best to see the score marks on. You can't see it on this one. But you then want to move it up to four and a quarter, which is up there. Punch again and score again. So now you've got those in, you want to turn your paper around. This is about circles, just keep going round clockwise. This part here, let me see if you can see. This part here, the score guide, should line up with your score. That's how you know where you're going. So as soon as that's lined up with it, punch it again and score again. And you want to do that on both of the score marks. And then just quickly whizzing round, you want to do that on every side. Oh. perhaps the ombre side might have been best to show up these score lines I'm really not sure whether you can see it but there you, you go once again the score line on there to get it all the way around so you don't actually have to do any measuring on your other three your measuring is just on the first one it should leave you then with this this pattern with your two score lines on each side now this side of your punch board you put the paper in, punch, and it just rounds off the edges so it gives you a nice finish on all of your edges. There you go. And that was the hardest part of that project done. Collect up all the bits afterwards once you've punched them out. It doesn't have a bottom on the punch board, so don't move it after doing it, pick it up, otherwise you'll scatter all your bits and pieces all over. So now you just want to burnish along your score lines. This is simple now, that is the hardest part of this project. The scoreboard for the envelopes is honestly one of the simplest things to use. And Stampin' Up! do one as well for gift bags. But you can do gift bags 
on the envelope punch boards. You can't do envelopes on the gift bag punch board. So if you're going to pick one, and you're only going to choose one, I'd recommend picking the punch board. And I have now got a slight problem. In fact, I can't find what I've done with my scissors. There they are. Right. So for this, I'm going to show you on this side, but this is not the side I'm going to be using. You want to come along here on each of these and just cut a nap out. So you're going along the score line and in there just to create a tab. You don't need to create a tab on here because it's automatically rounded for you. I mean it makes some lovely things but it really is one of the laziest crafts when you're doing it because it's it has, it's done everything for you on that. noticed I, because I've been trying to show you that side I've actually bent along that side which is really not what I wanted to do because I want that bit inside and not on the outside I, I want this this diamond jewels on the outside so I'm just going to fold them all back over again as it's stamping up DSP it allow you to do that because it is quite strong it does allow you to to play with it so now these two tabs I'll give you some advice, you don't have to follow it but it just makes it so much easier. Put the glue on all the tabs before you begin to assemble because it's such a small diddy little box. If you don't, you end up having to try and fit your fingers inside, it gets all messy which is what I did on this one. So once you've done that, you just bring it all together like you would a normal box. Bring all your tabs in and set them straight. And then on this side, this is what I mean when you've got one tab left, it's hard to get the glue in, but if you've already done it, it's quite simple. And that there literally is the extent of your box. When you go down to fold it, this is slightly too long. So what I did earlier was I guesstimated roughly how long it was, and I think it's about there. Yeah, just cut that bit off and then that leaves you with this bit. So with this bit, I just grabbed my scoring tool. I haven't got it to hand because I put it back on the scoreboard. <laughs> Here we go. Just roughly scored where it should be and folded it across. Where that's folded, just grab a pen. You should come up roughly where you want to cut. I just have um, a cutting knife. It's not a stamping up one or anything. It's just a cutting knife. Um, stamping up do do a, a trimming board, but their trimming board. I've just took this off screen to do it because I've got a self heal mat underneath my stamping up mat and I can see a little bit of it towards the bottom of it so I'm just cutting this down there roughly it doesn't have to be neat or tidy because your top bit is going to fold into it but yeah stamping up I've got a trimmer which does work but it won't work on this because you've already assembled your box but you can't tell where you want your hole to be before you've assembled it so there is the box ready for you to put and I do have just a few oh there's a funny one there oh that means that means that's mine to eat a few licorice comforts just to put in there and there's your box and the stamp I got the stamp from the ready to pop stamp set and I use this in joy here so if I just bring in a scrap piece of Whisper White. I stamped it in Pool Party just because I've been loving the ink colours so much. I've been using them on everything. 
and it's not that they've got boring it's just I didn't want to show you every project this week to be with ink colours now my pool party needs re-inking I found that out earlier I'm just going to do that we well we do have a small enough circle punch for this I don't have it so I'm just cutting around it but if you don't have steady hands and you don't like cutting around your images and we do have a punch for this in the current catalogue there we go one that I will mention to you also from this this ready to pop stamp set which I was going to do with this was I was going to use this wreath here I'd stamped it out and I'd stamped it out in lemon and lime twist and I was just going to put that on a dimensional inside it it does look lovely but it didn't look right on the boxes I don't know whether it's the size of the box oh it didn't look right on that box I didn't think might have been because of the the colour but I think it's going to look all right on that box so what I'm going to quickly do is I'm just going to grab a sponge stamping up doo doo dabbers I however just use a bit of old washing up sponge and sponge off the edges you see that just to give it a bit of background color because it's going on to a white background I know there's a pattern on the background but it's going on to a white background and it will just help it help it not look as, as funny sat there actually it's gonna look nice on that one I don't know why I didn't like it on the other one actually but I think it was because it was too much white I do like it on this one so I'm just going to put a dimensional to the back of there in case I didn't tell you because I know I was <laughs> I was fiddling around this is my crafts does this look nice doesn't it look nice this was the wreath from the ready to pop stamp set and I cut it with the one and three eighth circle which fit perfectly and then I just stuck the enjoy on and I've done it for the first one but just just didn't feel it so Take a dimensional and put that on there. I don't know why. I, I didn't. Oh, I do. It's because of the white. It still looks lovely like that. But those are my two little envelope punch board boxes. I love them. And they are so quick to use. I mean, this video has been probably 13 minutes, but probably only five of them was making this box. The rest of it was me jibber-jabbering and me working out what I was going to put on them. They're nice and they're simple and easy, and they just have these little treats inside. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Like I said, this was my fifth day. I still have two more to bring to you back to back, and then there will be more on my channel. Please subscribe. Leave me a comment and let me know what you've been thinking of the series as well. Also, I am on Facebook. There is my stamping up website as well and don't forget anything you buy in July if you spend £45 Stampin' Up! are giving you a £4.50 voucher for for you to use in August that's not capped at £45 if you spend £90 Stampin' Up! are giving you two £4.50 vouchers so don't worry get spending and then in August you get free stuff back from it if you like them leave me a message let me know Add me on Facebook and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you.